Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Simon. Welcome to another episode of Arrow, um, as we are probably going to get the fallout of some of the big twists from the last episode. Um, most notably, that, that Slade is still alive. Um, we saw him come back to life on the island to find Shadow had been shot dead. Um, seemingly, although whether he knows it from a choice that Oliver made to save Sarah... Um, now, he's been in the city watching Oliver's every move. And it's clear that whatever happened between them on the island, Slade's pissed. He's very pissed. He's lost an eye. Um, I'm presuming that it was Oliver who did that with an arrow. He did mention something about um, wanting to, you know, pay him back, I guess, an eye for an eye kind of situation. Except he wants Oliver dead. Um... And so, you know, I, I just, with him now being in Starling City, and we know that he is the one who's overseeing all of these actions that this blood guy is, is taking, um, you know, it's his, it's his blood that is the key for this serum that we saw in the last episode. Um, you know, firstly, we start off with Oliver ODing, um, which was as a result from the previous episode, um... Thankfully, Barry Allen knows how to stop someone ODing on certain things, and he knows that warfarin is actually just rat poison. And thankfully, they had some rat poison lying around, um, and that saved Oliver. And then, um, you know, Barry ended up going back to, to Central City because that whole shebang is about to begin. Um, we saw the end of the episode, you know, the the events surrounding the first episode of The Flash, which was pretty cool. I will admit, getting to see the beginning scene of another show um, on Arrow is is pretty cool. Um, and so that that's that character established in the universe now and, you know, doing his own thing on that show, um, which I've seen the first four seasons of. So I think someone, someone asked me the question if I was going to watch the crossovers again, and I'm not sure. I, I, if it's one I've already seen, it's unlikely, because I did see... Um, some of the crossover episodes on the other shows, but just didn't react to them. Um, just didn't react to them. So I, I don't think I will. I'll probably skip over those because, again, I've, I've seen them before and I don't like reacting to stuff that I've already seen because it's not... doesn't feel right. doesn't feel genuine. Um, but, um, yeah, he also shot Roy Harper in the leg because he doesn't want Roy snooping around anymore, you know, with Thea being involved. Um, there was a whole ton of stuff that went on. Um, you know, they, they were trying to um, tease sort of a Felicity Barry Allen relationship that never really went anywhere. Um, but I knew that anyway. Um, and, you know, we're just kind of, we're carrying on sort of getting little tidbits from, sorry, I've just had Zuko show up here. Um, we're still getting little tidbits of, you know, what happened on the island. Um, and now that we know that Slade is there, I can't wait for that confrontation. I can't wait to find out what happened between them. Um, also, you know, Malcolm is still there as well. Moira um, pointed out to him that, you know, she told Ra's al Ghul that he was still alive. And Ra's al Ghul would not take kindly to that because he went against Ra's al Ghul when he tried to do the undertaking. So um, Malcolm's got his own problems. But yeah, we're going to jump into this next episode, aren't we, Zuko? But before we do, I want to say a big thank you to Frank Trammell, the lone detective and Karen Abel for being Patreon super supporters. Um, as always, guys, you can find Patreon in the link in the description below. So yeah, let's jump in, and let's see what happens next on Arrow. Seen a man in a skull mask. Oh, he's still out there. Oliver, for the past five weeks, you have pushed yourself pretty hard looking for this guy. He has the Miracuru, Diggle. And you, you saw what it took to kill. One guy that had been injected. I mean, we practically had to drop a building on him. So to imagine a ten or a hundred. Yeah. Imagine a thousand. Has he told Dig about the island and what happened there? You'd have thought he would have done. Oh no. They're burying Shadow. Shadow always told me that I wouldn't die here. But looking back, I realized that she never once said that about herself. He'll he kill you. In his system what does that have to do with anything? Look, the Japanese, they experimented on hundreds of men working to develop Mirakuru, and I read the research. The people who died, they were the lucky ones. 
The ones who survived, they were deformed. Either their bones or their minds. They became someone else. You summoned me here for a drink? That didn't have her name on the bottle. No, I had the date. I'm sure that was her dad's name. Something to do with Sebastian Bled? Okay, dude. You're scaring me with those eyes. Oh, okay. What building was that? Get down. Anyone in the building? Cleaning crew and a group of bankers working on a late night deal. You're gonna step on something. And you'll break everything. You okay? Where are you going? To the plane. To get geared up. Yeah. Revenge. I'm gonna find him and when I do, I'm gonna cut pieces off of him. You can't. Ivo has a ship full of men, of killers. Hey! She's not. Get out of my way, kid. You just need to take it easy. Huh? I said, get out of my way. How did I get to be so lucky? You stole my purse. Mm hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's why you don't have sex in the office. Ugh. Grenade? Oh, that was cool. It's a decoy. Was that him, Felicity? You picked up the wrong signal. What? Clearly, his expertise extends to obscuring that signal. Felicity, your expertise was supposed to trump his. Don't get mad at her. Excuse me. If you have something to say to me, Oliver, say it. People are dying. So I would like you to pull your head out of Central City and get back in the game. Sure, right after you get yours out of your ass. Oh, me. shit. Right. Oh, oh, shit. Take a breath. Let's throw down. I want to know what exactly Come on. What crack about Central City meant to imply? When the first bomb went off, you weren't here. When the so? second bomb went off, you sent me the wrong way. After you didn't catch him in the first place. Don't blame me. Firstly, you didn't have it. she doesn't have to be there. She can have her own life. I need some air. Secondly, she did her best. Calm the hell down, Oliver. I think you didn't have a problem with Felicity's performance until she met Barry Allen. Mm hmm. Boom, boom! And so begins the romance story. Yeah, you almost killed him, Slade. That train set for your nephew just came in. Oh, is it? That's the bomber. You are a miracle worker, Mr. Sheffer. How much do I owe you? Fifty dollars, even. Forget the sales tax. <laughs> ah, he doesn't pay tax. I wouldn't miss it. One of their most prolific fans has IP address right here in Starling. Tell me. The computer's at a local souvenir shop. The wackadoo in question goes by the username Shrapnel. Oh. No, I need you at the rally. Cover our bases. Good job, Felicity. Well done, Felicity. Is this all for me? No, for me. Actually, PD phone records. Why are you going through the department's phone records? Why are you keep your nose out of his business? Up on your uh, not exactly boyfriend. Boom. You're dead. Oh no. Or will be. If you take one more step. Or move a single muscle. Hold tight, I see a fuse box. Oliver, be careful. Oliver? Oliver? 
He survived. Whoa! Uh oh. Go, Roy. Ah. Yes. He could have easily blown up the bombs at this point, but he didn't. Drop the bow. I've got charges planted all over Starling. I drop this stick, they all blow. Did you just hear what I said? Yup. Ah! I love it when it's that simple. Just, just cut, cut the wire. Cut the wire, man. You know. Not exactly. How's your shoulder? Oh, just a through and through. Walking apart. Still. Hmm. Should go home and get some rest. And now they're alone. What just made me realize how much I need you here? You know, in the, be the beginning, I was just gonna, was gonna do all of this mm -hmm. by myself. And now with you and Diggle, I rely on you. Mm. He's dreaming about you. You know, actually, there's conflicting cases about whether coma patients can, in fact, dream normally, or they're more like hallucinating. Thank you. It's okay. You can trust me. It's okay. Sebastian's my friend. Sebastian is the devil. Oh. He's the one who put me here. Oh. He made everybody seem I'm insane. But why would he do that? And why are you acting insane? He killed his father. There we go. He was there. I saw it. What? Oh my god. Sebastian isn't your nephew. He's your son. He's your son. Yeah, so, just confirming what we already knew. He is a very bad man. Um, so, yeah, he locked his mother up. Killed his father. And the question for me is, is that... Okay, so, she says that he locked her in the mental institution and made everyone think that she was insane. Why is it that she's acting insane, then? You know, the whole singing bit. If she can get clarity and, and talk normally like that, why isn't it just like, hey, my son is a murderer? I, I know it would sound strange coming from an in, insane asylum um, patient, but still, if she acted normal and sane, then they would maybe start to believe her a little bit. Because um, she seemed fairly cognizant there. She seemed fairly with it. Um and I don't know, maybe maybe the events of what happened in the past caused her to go crazy. Maybe seeing her son kill her husband sent her loopy. I don't know. Um, but yeah, a little bit more backstory on Sebastian, which, you know, just confirms the fact that he is a dick. Um, and he definitely was using that unity. I mean, for me, I'm thinking to myself, right, if he was in with the bomber, then it makes a bit of sense that, you know, he was using it as a publicity stunt. But it definitely does not seem like he was in with the bomber. It seems like the bomber was, again, a lone, crazed, anti-government crackpot. Um, and he was just working on his own. In which case, that was very, very risky from um, Sebastian. Because, you know, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. But he did. Um... 
So, you know, maybe we'll find out a little bit more down the line about the bomber or, you know, I, I, I get a feeling the bomber was, again, just a means to an end for this episode just with regards to getting everyone into that square and getting Sebastian, you know, his popularity to, to, to rise through an adverse event. Um the the stuff the theory is definitely going to be on to Roy like she doesn't know that he was injected with the Mirakuru um it makes me wonder like what what would have what would have Oliver had have said to him like about what happened like would he have told him to to stay away to deal with it I I, I mean you know you'd think that he would be concerned about the fact that Roy is essentially a superhuman now and you know it would just take one crazy 10 for him to go crazy you know especially seeing what happened to Slade in the past um speaking of Slade has he I'm wondering if he's told Felicity and Dick everything about what happened on the island because when he was talking to them about the Mirakuru and and Dick specifically said that the Mirakuru has got him spooked he was kind of talking in a way that said that he hadn't told them everything which I think is like fairly foolish you know, they should know what happened. They should know the full story so that they can understand why the Mirakuru is so dangerous. And they can just understand why Oliver is the way he is. He was definitely very, very harsh towards Felicity with that um, van chase because, you know, firstly, when he was talking about her being away during the first bombing, you know, she has every right to live her own life. Um, it's not like she could have predicted there would be a bomb. Um, you know, she was with Barry, um, who's in a coma. Then the second one, you know, it was like she said, he managed to mask his signal. And, you know, she was doing the best that she could. And it's clear that they're building this tension up between them. It's kind of like an elastic band. You know, they're trying to pull them apart so they snap together. And the tension brings them together. And it's all a romantic, happy story in the end. Um, which, you know, even knowing the fact that Olicity is a thing, it would have been so obvious if I didn't know that, that they were going to get together, you know. Um, there's so much kind of um, angst and romantic tension between the two of them that, you know, it, it would really take someone who is not paying attention to miss the fact that these two are really going to get it on soon. Um, so, speaking once again of Slade, he um, he's obviously feeling the effects of the Mirakuru and that goes a small way to explaining why things between him and Oliver really went downhill. Um, you know, he almost killed Oliver and in a fit of rage. And you know what? I'd have said to him, I said, go crazy. Go go and kill all those guys on the boat. Be my guest. Um, just don't take the Mirakuru, because if you die, then they're going to get it. Um, and I'm just thinking to myself now, I'm thinking that he is going to go and, and fuck shit up. He's going to go and kill some people. But then... Is he going to start blaming Oliver? And and obviously he's going to find out that Oliver lied or didn't tell him the truth about Shadow. Um, and that's the, that's the trigger event, you know. Um, I think with a person in as unstable, uh, unstable a mindset as his, I don't blame Oliver for not telling him because I wouldn't want to tell him that I'm the reason that his girlfriend is dead. Or not his girlfriend, but... The person who he cared for very much is dead because that is likely to cause him to snap your neck. Um, but unlike Oliver, I would not be so hasty to try and tell him the truth because Oliver was like, I've got to tell him. I'd have been like, nope, you know what? I'm going to wait and see how things pan out. You know, I'm going to keep a tight lip on this. And, and, you know, strictly speaking, saying that Ivo killed her, it's not, it's not a lie. It's not a lie. It's the truth. Um, but I wouldn't be going into detail about it, you know? Um, also Laurel, her drug problem is progressing. She's stealing pills from her dad. And I did think that I saw Quint and Lance on the bottle of meds. Um, so, you know, she's, she's getting into her own declining state of mental health. And, um, obviously this Sebastian blood thing is not going to help her. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to picture where her story is going because with Oliver set to hook up with um felicity laurel doesn't really have anyone at the moment you know she's been hanging out with sebastian but he is obviously for the chopping board because he's the villain um so i do wonder where her story is going by the end of the season you know i wouldn't be surprised if she was not to be around too much longer um either for her leaving 
or there being some big change, you know, in her. That, that's that's really where I'm, I'm thinking her story's going because she doesn't have a lot to do after this. You know, she doesn't have a love interest. Um, her dad seems to be getting on fine. Her sisters, you know, I can only imagine that something with Sarah will come up. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's a really interesting one. I just don't know where her story's going. Um, but this was a really good episode. I enjoyed it. Um, it was more of a setup, I think, for certain, uh, like, events. You know, like, setting up for Oliver and Felicity, setting up for um, Blood to be revealed as the bad guy. You know, it was one of those transition episodes, but they did it in a way that it wasn't, it didn't feel like filler. Um, it kept me interested. And, you know, there's some, there's definitely some um, exciting story plots that are going to be coming up, you know, so I'm looking forward to it. But um, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you for the next one.